Just a glimpse of your great love The marvel of the cross I know Just a look at Calvary The wonder of the cross we told This journey to the cross again My eyes are fixed on all things you All things new The cross on which my Savior died He rose up from the grave and lives He calls my name Jesus, it's you to you, your love that heals, this life renewed, Jesus, it's you, it's been you, your grace revealed, my soul will sing, it's you. Life.
morning everyone welcome again to another online worship service it's so good to have all of you tuning in with us this morning you know before we uh, go into praise and worship we want to take some time now to pray amen so we want to continue to pray for our service we want to pray that god will be with all of us wherever we are at and that god will continue to um, bless the service this morning so where you ask will you can i encourage you will you stand to your feet let's pray let's commit this service into god's hands amen Father Lord, we thank you Lord for today, oh Father God. God, we thank you indeed today is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. God, we thank you for all that you have done for us. We thank you again and praise you for your goodness in our lives, for your goodness over everything, oh Father God. God, we thank you uh, for another chance for to, uh, to, to meet over online on our online service. God, we thank you for all the technology that has been given to us, oh Father God. God, we continue to commit this service onto your hands. God, we pray. We thank you, Lord, for everyone who has served this morning, oh Father God, and we pray that you will continue to um, bless this worship service today. God, we pray that you will use this um, Use this for your glory, oh Father God. We pray for everyone that's tuning in this morning, oh Father God. God, from our rooms, from our apartments, from our flats. God, I pray for your presence to be with everyone. God, I pray um, wherever we are feeling right now, God, I pray that you will refresh us with your supernatural touch. God, you pray for your, your Holy Spirit to be with all of us this morning. God, I pray that even we continue to bless the word, the teaching of the word into your hands, oh Father God. God, I pray that you will be with us you will search our hearts so that we can be more like you and we God we pray that you will use this all that we have done oh father god to uh spread your word far and wide maybe different ones may be tuning in later god i pray that you will still continue to speak oh god so god we continue to commit ourselves today as well into your hands god we pray we want to lay aside every distraction any different things that we are going through today and just help us to focus on you this morning oh god so god we give you all the praise and all the glory in jesus name we pray amen amen we also want to continue to pray for all our different international church plants on the screen before you are all the list of all our different locations amen you know as we are all one big family we pray for each other and we pray for each other they pray for us as well and we want to continue to pray for them so today we want to continue to pray for specifically for ex myanmar and we pray that god's hand will be with them and with them and pastor sam and his team as well so why don't you where you are why don't you um, pray um for the next one minute continue to commit ex myanmar into prayer bless them bless the leadership team there bless them as a nation as well and then i'll close us in prayer amen Father Lord, we just want to thank you again for your work that you are doing in ex Myanmar, oh Father God. God, we want to continue to commit Myanmar as a nation into your hands, oh Father God. God, we continue to pray for your will to be done there, oh Father God. God, I pray for peace over the nation, oh Father God, even though they may be going through a difficult period right now. God, we pray for your peace to prevail, oh Father God. God, we pray um, there won't be any... Um, there'll be enough food, God. We pray that um, there will be sufficient for everyone in sufficient for everyone in that nation, oh Father God. And God, we continue to pray that you will uh, be sovereign. Your sovereign hand will reign over that nation as well, oh Father God. So God, we continue to bless Myanmar, oh Father God. And God, we want to continue to continue to pray for ex Myanmar this morning. God, we thank you, Lord, for Pastor Sam and his team, oh Father God. God, we pray for your wisdom. God, we pray for your grace. God, we pray for your anointing to be upon him, oh God, upon Pastor Sam today, oh Father God. God, even though it might be such a difficult situation navigating this and the pandemic as well, God, God, I pray really you will be with him. God, you will uh, continue to provide for all his needs. You will continue to give him a word each time he ministers. God, you teach him, help him. You will encourage him where he is uh, personally. And I pray that you will use, out of that, you will use him to um, encourage your church there, oh Father God. God, we pray that God, your, you will use your church to be such a salt and light, oh Father God, um, to be even through such a season, oh Father God. God, I pray through this. God, may, may we continue to see um, your goodness. May we continue to 
see more people turn to you may this be an avenue for the share even more avenue for the sharing of your gospel so god we thank you again we call you bless ex myanmar we call you bless myanmar as a nation as well god we just thank you in jesus precious name we pray amen amen Morning Church, so good to see all of you here this morning. I want to just stand even as we enter into this time of praise and worship. You know, uh, the Word of God says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And this morning we are alive and we can uh, worship Him because He is alive. Amen. So church, in the count of three, we're going to give God our loudest shout of praise. Ready? One, two, three. Hallelujah. It's your name, Lord. It's your name, Lord. It's your name, I will magnify. It's your name, Lord. It's your name, Lord. It's your name, I will glorify.
Home be about to be leaving my life, my offering. Creator, you make all things new. There's no one, no one like you. God of everything, reveal yourself to me. As I am, all of me for all of you. I am waiting at your feet now. The reason that I breathe, God, for everything I need. You are my savior, God. Jesus, have.
heavy weight Take my life Take my life As an offering Oh, would you meet me here again? Would you meet me here again?
Thank you, worship team, for leading us in such an amazing time of worship. I pray that all of us were blessed this morning. You know, today is our first Sunday of the month and we want to take communion together as a church family. I encourage you, why don't you quickly prepare your bread and cup to take communion. You know, um, even as we take communion today, you know, we, we, we take it as a sign of remembrance, as a sign of gratitude to remember what Jesus has done for us. I pray that even as we reflect this morning, we will reflect upon his goodness we reflect upon how much he has done for us and allow gratitudes around allow gratitudes and thankfulness to fill our hearts again as well you know even in in the remembering as well we also want to know that that through the cross Jesus has won it for won it for us so can I encourage you even as we take communion remember that as well remember that the victory has been won and we can overcome with all that he has done for us so why don't you encourage you to Take some time out right now and reflect on that and declare that and, re- and just thank God for all that He has done for us. Amen. Thank you. Amen. You know, reading from 1 Corinthians verse chapter 11, verse 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that re- that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks, he, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake of the bread together. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's partake of the cup together. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Let's pray. Lord, we, we thank you again for all that you have done. God, we come back again to that place of, of the cross, you know, on that cross where you died for us, on that place of our salvation, oh Father God. And God, we come back and say again, thank you. Thank you, God, for all that you have done. Thank you for dying for us. Thank you for allow, so that we can have a, a, a chance, a, a relationship with you. Thank you because of all that you have done. We have a renewed hope and all that a renewed hope in our lives. We thank you because of what you have done. We can have healing. We thank you because of what we have done. We can have the strength to overcome. We thank you because of what you have done. We can also overcome the different battles and challenges in our lives. So God, we thank you again and know then declare and say thank you again and say you are so good, God. And we just want to say we love you this morning. I pray, help us to even know as we say thank you to you, know that you have done it all and help us to live a life that is so worthy of what you have done for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Welcome again to our online worship service. It's so good to have all of you tuning in with us this morning. Why don't you say hello to each other on the chat as well. You know, if you're joining us for the very first or the very second time, we'd love to say a big hello to you as well. If you, if it's possible, why don't you just uh, say hi as well in the chat. Just say hi, I'm new here. And all of us will gladly welcome you as well. After service, I will be dropping a Zoom link. So if you're new today and you would love to connect with different ones from church, why don't you say drop in, drop in in the, in the link and we'll, yeah, likewise, l- l- um, love to put a name to your face and we'll love to get to know you better as well. Amen. So uh, we're moving on to the time, our time of giving of our tithes and offering. And in Acts, we look forward to this time because we want to worship God in the giving of the in giving our best in every area of our lives, including our finances as well. You know, there's two ways in which you can give today. The first way is bank by way of bank transfer, the details of which are flashed up on the screen before you. Or if you're not comfortable with giving by way of bank transfer, why don't you just set aside that money uh, and then when we can meet physically again, pop, pop into any one of our service and then you can put the money into the offering bag as well. You know, as we learn, we want to continue to give God in the back in the very best so um, why don't you allow me to pray and then we'll close 
I want you to allow me to uh, read a portion of scripture and we can close together before we give. Amen. No reading from Proverbs 3 verse 9 to 10 says this, Honour the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase, so your barns will be filled with plenty and your wards will overflow with new wine. Amen. Thank you Lord. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you again for all that you have given to us. We thank you for the roof over our heads. God, we thank you for the food on our table. We thank you for the jobs that we have. We thank you for the allowance that we have as well. God, we know that it all comes from you. And today we want to give, even uh, we want to give the very best that we have unto you, O oh Father God. So God, we continue, uh, will you continue to bless this offering today? Continue to use it for the furtherance of your kingdom. And God, we just want to say, even as we give, it's our way it's just another form of our worship unto you today in jesus name i pray amen amen hey church i have two announcements for you today the first announcement is, is that we'll be having prayer service this week you know we come together to pray for each other pray for the cities that we're living in pray for this nation pray for for this current pandemic that we are in at the moment. So if you haven't come for a prayer service before, we'd love to have you join us. So why don't you just drop us a message and we'll gladly direct you to the most closest group. Amen. Now the second announcement is this, and I'm really excited about this. As you know, X Church Malaysia normally has an annual missions conference at the end of February each year. And this year we're going online. Yay! So um, please block out your dates. It'll be a 24 hours conference. Block out your dates. It's happening on the 26th to the 27th of February, Friday, Saturday. So more details will be coming in the more details will be coming out in the next couple of weeks. But please block out your dates for now and be excited about it amen amen you don't want to take this time out as well to celebrate birthdays so if it's your birthday if it's your birthday if it's your birthday this week happening this today and all the way to the come next saturday we want to wish you a very happy birthday i know it's herod's birthday and if there's anyone else that i may have missed today i just want to say a very happy birthday to you as well and may this year be your best year yet amen amen now, before we go on to the Word of God, we want to just take time out this morning to pray. You know, we want to pray for the pandemic that we're in. We praise God that the numbers are starting to go down and the vaccination uh, programs are rolling out successfully. But we don't want to just trust in that, but we want to continue to trust in God, in Jesus, because He's the one who heals. Amen. Now, also at the same time, we, don't want to, we also want to continue to keep different ones of you in prayer. You know, I, I, I sense that different ones of us are going through different challenging situations or maybe some of us are feeling a bit fatigued, a bit tired, a bit just lethargic from this current lockdown that we're going through. We want to pray for you today. We want to pray and declare that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And we want to pray and I want just to learn, one of, can I encourage you where you are? Why don't you lift up hands of faith and lean into God this morning and I'll close this and I'll just pray together. Amen. God, we thank you, God, that you are a good, good God, Father God. God, we thank you uh, for all that you have done for us, oh, Father God. And God, today, I want to commit different ones in our church into your hands. Maybe different ones of us are going through a different situa difficult situation. Or maybe some of us are just feeling tired or fatigued from a lockdown. Or maybe some of us are just going through um, a, a crossroads. I'm not, I'm not sure what directions to take. And God, I pray for, for, for you and we feel maybe just helpless in that, that situation. God, today I pray for all everyone that's tuning in today for your strength. We pray that your word says that the joy of the Lord is our strength and God, we declare, I want to declare that over everyone's lives, declare that over everyone's uh, week that's coming up, declare that over everyone this morning. We pray and we want to learn to lean on you and know that you are good and we can just uh, rest in you and draw strength from you this morning. So God, I thank you, Lord, I pray for everyone today. I pray for such a sense of your joy, your goodness to flow in their lives, to flow into their rooms right now. Sense your sense of your love so that you know it will just overflow into their lives right now, God. In Jesus' name. I God, I also want to pray for 
all um, the pandemic that's currently happening. We know that the numbers, we thank you, the numbers are falling a bit. We thank you the vaccines are being rolled out well. And God, we know that God, yet in spite of it all, that you are the God that heals, oh Father God. So God, we pray for your healing hand upon this nation as well. God, we pray that you will continue to heal. You continue to curb the infection down, oh God. God, we pray for everyone that's still in hospitals or feeling ill right now. Maybe not just with COVID, but also different illnesses God, we pray for your, your healing hand upon them right now. We pray and declare by your stripes, we are healed, oh Father God. And God, we pray for the government. We pray that you will continue to lead them in their decision. Um, we pray that you will grant them your wisdom. So God, we continue to trust in you and know, continue to declare your goodness. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen.我们在天上的父in this manner, therefore pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lệch cho chúng con ở trên trời Giang cha được đôn thắng Vương quốc cha được đến Ý cha được nan Ở đất như ở trên trời Xin cho chúng con hôm nay thức ăn đủ ngày Xin tha đổi cho chúng con Như chúng con đã tha những kẻ Có lỗi với chúng con Xin đừng để chúng con bị khám dỗ Nhưng kiếu chúng con khỏi điều ác Vì vương quốc, quyền năng, vinh quang Đều thuộc về cho đời đời AMEN Morning Church, so glad you could join us this morning and uh, today we are concluding our three-part series on the Lord's Prayer and we started about three weekends ago studying the Lord's Prayer specifically on God's kingdom and wanting it to invade ours and we talked about the agenda of God and how we can align our plans and purposes together and in line with God's. And last week, you know, we had such a great time learning from Pastor Kat as she taught us how to truly enjoy and steward God's daily allowance to us. That's right. And God doesn't just want to bless us daily. No, that's a given. But what's more important is how do we steward? How do we handle and redistribute what He has given us? The blessing, the grace, and the time, of course. And I hope that you guys have been experiencing more and more the power of tithing your day and your time to God. Today, I want to talk to us about the armor of God. Now, I know as you're immediately thinking of the armor of God, you're thinking of efficiency. You're thinking of like, you know, the, the helmet of salvation and all that. Uh, but today, I want to teach us how to put on the armor of God by praying the Lord's Prayer. You know, I, I, why don't we go into Scripture and before we read any more Scripture, let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you that your Word is alive. It speaks to us. Lord, we pray that right now as we're about to read Scripture, that your Word, let every verse, every letter jump out of the pages 
of the Bibles that we're reading from and let it leap into our hearts. Lord, transform us from the inside out. Correct us, Lord, so that we become more like you. Today, we are gathered not for more information, but Lord, we desire divine transformation in our lives so that we become more like you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Why don't we turn to Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 to 13. Amen. Uh, We've already heard it being prayed. And uh, isn't it amazing to hear the Lord being glorified in different languages? And right now, we want to read it for ourselves. In Matthew 6, verse 9 to 13, uh, reads like this. In this manner, therefore, pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. You know, Jesus knows that our lives are are most uh, uh, best enjoy or most fruitful or we live our fullest life you know jesus said i come to give you life and life to the full we live our fullest lives when we our lives are in line with god's purposes uh, when we are uh, enjoying and stewarding uh, his provision And of course, when we are pursuing holiness with God. And that's why the Lord's Prayer, you know, was designed in such a way that helps us to do all of those three things. And so today, with the title of the armor of God, I want to teach us, I want to help us on how we can pursue holiness into a deeper intimacy with God. Now, straight away, I want you to know that holiness, first of all, is, you know, it's it's a gift from God. But do you know that there's also two types of holiness and God expects both from us? You know, we know for a fact that we are saved. Our sins are forgiven because God first loved us. And so we are saved, you know, by the grace of God through faith in Christ Jesus, believing that he died for our sins. Now, that kind of holiness is a a positional holiness. You know, if I want to use a very big Christian word, uh, that's our justification. Ooh, I know. You know, but God doesn't want us to just be justified, you know, in terms of a holiness God wants us also to be sanctified or in other words, you know, behavioral holiness. Uh, Let me put it this way. Um, When I got married with Pastor Cat in 2012, specifically uh, July 21st, 2012, you know, uh, we became husband and wife. Now, today, you know, we are married and this year uh, would be our ninth uh, anniversary. And, And today she is no less my wife than she was uh, nine years ago. Uh, and, and so what does that mean? It means that when we give our lives to Jesus, you know, uh, uh, whether you were eight years old or whether you were 18 years old or, or just eight months ago, you know, that, that changed your status forever. That's right. In 2012, me and Kat, our status changed from just fiance or girlfriend, boyfriend to become husband and wife. And today we're still husband and wife. And on one hand, when God saved us, he changed our status in his eyes. Once we were sinners, now we are saints by his grace and his finished work on the cross. So, What we do cannot make us more holy. But now that God has healed us, now that God has, uh, you know, saved us, uh, he expects us, the Bible says, to bear fruit in according to our repentance. Uh, The Bible says also this, that you shall know a tree by its fruit. And also we cannot just be Christians in name only. Uh, We cannot just be claiming, oh, Jesus saved me. And he did. But now that we are saved, 
uh, we also need to show, you know, works that reflect the salvation of God. And that's what I mean by sanctification or, or pursuing holiness. And this is what Jesus wants us to do. He knows that, you know, this prayer, when he taught it, you know, it would transcend, you know, it's, it, even though when he taught it, he had yet to go to the cross. He knew that this teaching is eternal, like all of God's word. It is eternal. It is timeless. And it applies not just then, then, but it applies even after the finished work on the cross. So God knows that after we have been saved by grace, saved by by him, you know, we are still to align our lives to the purposes of God. We are still to be stewards of God's provision, and we are still to pursue holiness. Like I said, when I married Pastor Cat, you know, back then we are married. Today we're still married. Married is married. But what has changed? Our intimacy has changed. And that's what holiness is. Many times we think of holiness like a boring word. We, we think that it just means having a halo over our head. And, and maybe cartoons have, have played this up in a negative way. People look at heaven as a bunch of people wearing white robes with halo on their head, playing harps for eternity. And therefore, when we think of holiness, we think boring. But that's not what that is. Holiness is intimacy with God. Like I said, you know, I've been married to Pastor Cat for nine years now, or I mean approaching nine years now, and what truly has changed is that we've become more intimate, more intimate in our communication, more intimate in our knowledge of each other, so much so that now we can finish each other's sandwiches, I mean sentences. And, and that's the beautiful thing. And, and that's what I want to get us to today. Amen. You know, and, and what we need to know that is that as much as there is, you know, God on our side, uh, we shouldn't be ignorant of our enemy. There is an invisible enemy that we face. It just as how we pray, God, your kingdom come, your will be done for every kingdom, for every king that is an opposing a nation, that is an enemy. And so when Jesus taught us to pray, hey, lead us not into temptation and deliver us from the evil one, he is also wanting us to be aware that, hey, uh, uh, this is the life I want to live for you. But there is someone out there prowling to sabotage your life. You know, he is your worst enemy and he is the devil. I know sometimes in church when we talk about God and devil, it feels like, you know, are you, are you for real? Are you serious? But yes, the Bible is very serious. Jesus cast out demons and so the demon realm is real. You know, just like how we are currently living in a pandemic, you know, there is an invisible threat, just like how in our spiritual realm, there is an invisible threat. And so what I hope to do today is help us uh, to know how to put on the armor of God through the Lord's prayer uh, so that we uh, do not become fearful because there can be Two responses when you hear about, you know, things like, oh, demonic opposition or, you know, the devil. Uh, just like when you hear of the coronavirus, uh, you can either, A, be very fearful and go like, oh no, I'm so scared, I'm so scared, you know, uh, bump in the night, I'm so scared, is that the devil, you know, if something goes wrong, ah, the devil, you know, and, and like the pandemic, we can be so scared that we become so paralyzed that we, we just stay indoors, you know, that we do things that are irrational, like buy up 50 years load of toilet paper and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Fear makes us irrational. Uh, and also fear sometimes can, can make us so fearful that we start blaming everything. And that's what a lot of fearful people are doing right now. They're reading news and they're, they're blaming the government. They're blaming their neighbors. They're, they're, they're just, you know, because that's what fear does. It makes us our own worst enemy. But if, on the other hand, if we're too ignorant and go like, you know what, Pfft. 
you know, pandemic, pandemic. you know, I'm just going to go out there, I'm going to live my life, you know, I don't care, I'm going to touch everything, I'm going to lick everything, I'm just going to, you know, and that's wrong as well. And so the fine line between dealing with the spiritual realm and spiritual attacks and and and, and the devil, the, the or, or a tempter, uh, is not to be so fearful that we give him way too much credit and also not to be so ignorant uh, uh, as if like someone going out without wearing a mask that we don't realize, hey, you know, we need to uh, do our part. We need to uh, take the necessary precautions. Otherwise, we will fall sick or in terms of our battle with temptation, we will fall. It will fall from grace. And so today, I want to help us to unpack this. And what better way to unpack this uh, than to look at the original sin? You know, Jesus came to save us from the effects of that original sin when Adam and Eve fell. And so if we can look at how, you know, mankind first fell, then we will be able to, you know, prepare ourselves and, and we will be able to make a better stand, you know, when we ourselves are tempted. So let's go to the original problem and let's look at how Jesus will teach us to solve it. Amen. So why don't we turn? I know we're talking about Lord's Prayer. We'll come back to it in a while, but let's first turn to Genesis chapter 3. Amen. Genesis 3 verse 1 to 6. And we're going to read uh, from verse 1 to 6. And uh, if you're there, can I hear a good amen? Amen. Let's go. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field, which the Lord God has made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. And we'll stop there and go back and read on. But the rest is history. The rest is the rest of mankind. You know, murder, theft, you know, poverty, corruption, war. Everything came out of that one fruit. Now, what I want us to focus on, I'm going to bring us bit by bit through this. And I want to teach us how actually, you know, Jesus in, in the Lord's Prayer was actually preparing us on how to withstand against the temptation of the enemy. You know, the, the line, many times when we read in the Lord's Prayer, and it feels like it's a, it's a little throwaway line. Verse 13, lead us not into temptation, deliver us from the evil one. But actually, the, the lead not causing us not to fall into temptation and, and, and a protection from, from the evil one doesn't just start at verse 13. It starts at the start of the prayer. But I'm going to go into that in a bit. Uh, but first of all, let's learn of the schemes of the enemy. You know, if we can know how the enemy attacks, how the enemy tempts, then we will know how to defend and how to put on the right armor at the right time. Amen. You know, so the first thing we got to understand when we read this, okay, uh, is that when the devil tempts us, many times he causes us to lose focus or he causes us to have the wrong focus. And that's the first thing Satan did uh, when he tried to, you know, bring the woman down. He said that, has God indeed said that you shall not eat of every tree of the garden in verse one? And, and what I want us to know is this, that, you know, we don't have to turn to it, but earlier on in chapter 2, what God actually told uh, Eve was this, of every truth, of, I'm sorry, of every tree, <laughs> I'm about to say tree and fruit, fruit. Anyway, of every tree 
of the garden, you may freely eat. This is in uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 16. Uh, but, in verse 17, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. And so, do you see what the devil very cunningly did there? God said, every tree you can eat, there's one you can't eat. And the devil says, hey, I heard that God says you can't eat every tree. And so the devil is tempting the woman to change her focus from the abundance that God has in store for her uh, to the one thing that God doesn't want us to touch. Uh, and, and unknowingly, sometimes we do that, don't we? You know, you know, God has, you know, the so much more in store for us. You know, Christianity is not boring. You know, it's, it's, it, the God wants us to do so much. You know, if you, if you want to talk about things that we can't do, you know, go back and, and, and re-listen or re-watch our series on the Ten Commandments. There's, there's really only ten things that, that, that we need to be watchful against. But everything else we can do, go, have your best life, go, climb every mountain, go, pursue your career, go, uh, uh, eat good food and, and all that. You know, but the devil wants us to change our focus from the, the, the all that God has in store for us and focus on that one thing, that one thing that God still hasn't done yet or that one thing that God says we can't do. You know, and, and I, I hear this all the time. When people come to me and they go like, well, I really want to uh, 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 believe in Jesus. You know, he's so good. He's so loving. But how come, you know, uh, 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 God doesn't allow us to do that one thing? Or I hear people say like, uh, you know, I, I, I love God and, and, and Christianity sounds like, you know, what I need. Uh, I really need God. But I really can't reconcile uh, uh, how God can create everything in six days. Uh, the devil wants us to, if I can use this word, major on the minor. You know what I'm saying? You know, there's so many things. God wants us to focus on the abundance, uh, but there are only minor things. Uh, one thing, and, and the thing is this, right? Uh, not everything uh, is good for us. No, that, that's not God being cruel. That's just God protecting us. You know, as much as uh, we love, let's say, for example, one day God bless you with a child, and as much as you love your kid, uh, you cannot be, you know, giving the child candy non-stop. You know, in fact, when the baby's first born, no candy until, you know, they're much older, 18 years old, than candy. You know? um, but, you know, no candy. Uh, why? It, it, is candy evil? But at that time, at that time for a baby, candy is evil. Am I getting through to you? You know, and so it's not just about things that we can't do. You know, like for example, I love God, but why? Or why must you know a, a marriage be defined that way? You know, Christianity is all great, but but if only we can change that. You know, and and that's what the devil wants us to do. He wants us to look at the one thing, the one thing that God says, don't touch that, don't change that. Trust me in that. You know, whether it's the creation story, go like, what? You know, seven and all, but signs. And God said that, I know there's one thing that feels illogical to you. There's one thing that feels odd to you, but would you trust me in that? And, and so what we need to do is this. As the enemy tries to attack uh, and wants us to have the wrong focus. You know, I wrote here, the devil wants us to, to major on the minor. Jesus, through the Lord's Prayer, wants us to have heaven on earth. That's right. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 10, we read that earlier on. Jesus says, you know, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God desires the earth to be filled with his glory. And God desires for you to be part of that plan. You know, God desires, God sees, God's not blind. He sees the hurt in the world today. He sees the sickness. He sees the disease. He sees the poverty. He sees the pain. He sees the destruction. But God doesn't want it to stay that way. 
Instead, God wants us to carry his healing to the ends of the earth. He wants us to carry his good news to the ends of the earth. He wants us to carry, you know, our encouragement. You know, he wants to use you, friends, you know, uh, to, to, to feed the poor. God wants to bless you so that through you, you know, uh, schools can be built. Ministries can be birthed. More people can come to know of the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, we we live in a world where we go like, wow, you know, isn't that person amazing? He's a philanthropist, you know, always just doing good works. But God wants all of us to partake of the heavenly work of redeeming, of not just redeeming, but causing the earth to reflect heaven. Wouldn't you love to be part of God's healing process, to heal the brokenhearted, to set the captives free, you know, to, to, to be there and, and, and not just be there, but be a solution to the problems of the world? That's the so much more. That's a life and life to the full that God wants us to experience. And yet we are always hung up on that one thing. Wait, 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 wait. I want to do all that. And we are like the rich young ruler. I want to follow you. I want eternal life. But leave my possessions. That one thing, that one thing. Yeah, that one thing, friends. You know, compared to the so much more that God has in store for you. Why are we always tempted to focus on not just the one thing, but the wrong thing? Isn't it ironic that sometimes God challenges us to forgive and we can forgive anyone, you know, and we can forgive even people who don't know uh, Christ and, and, and they, they do worse things to us. They, 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 they curse at us. They persecute us. Uh, but and, and we're okay with forgiving them. We're okay with loving them. But that one brother in Christ, that one sister in Christ who has offended you, you'll be like, oh, you know, I'm never going back to that church again. Why? Of that one? Why are we falling prey to the temptation to, to cause us to major on the minor, to cause us to focus on the wrong thing? No, what we need to do, and this is point number one, is this, we need to reframe our context. That's right. Uh, no, put on the armor of God by declaring, by praying the Lord's prayer. You know, the Lord's prayer is not just like a, a, a wishful thinking. There is power in it. And every day when you pray the Lord's prayer, Lord, our Father in heaven, you know, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. What's that? That's reframing your context. You know, your kingdom come, your will be done. What's that? That's the context. There is a bigger will. There is God's will. There is God's plan. There is God's kingdom. And that's why there are certain things that we cannot understand. God, why, why are you so stuck on marriage being defined between a man and a woman? Why can't we just be, you know, changing with the times and, and, and we might not understand why that one thing God says, don't touch, do it my way. Because we do not understand the context of God. We are not just living for ourselves. We are not living, you know, just for the people around us. There is a heavenly context. There is a heavenly kingdom. There is a will that needs to be done. Amen. You know, that there are things uh, beyond our understanding. You know, we are so finite. Uh, we are, you know, I don't know, at, at most we live to a hundred. If anyone lives to a hundred, they are blessed. God is eternal. He sees the effects. He sees the danger of our actions, of certain things, the certain values that we accept. He sees how it can poison the generations to come and destroy a society, not in our generation, but in generations to come. There is a bigger context. There is eternity at stake. God has a higher point of view. And what the devil wants to trick us is to trick us to, to, to look at those one thing that we don't agree with. The one thing that still bugs us. 
and wants us to focus on that. And when we focus on that, we begin to allow that one thing. We forget that God is good. 99, you know, we got 99 testimonies in our lives. And, and it's that one disappointment that we cannot forget. Why is that? I don't know why is that. Maybe it's our fallen nature. It's definitely the temptation of the evil one to try to rob us of our holiness. You know, because when we when we give in to the temptation of disobeying God or this you no know, of distrusting God, we lose our intimacy with God. You know what I'm saying? When you lose trust with someone, you're not as intimate with that person, and that's what the devil wants to steal. He wants to steal our intimacy with God, us growing closer and closer with God and more like God. So point number one is we need to reframe our context. Amen. Don't major on the minor. Remember, you know, remind yourself this. God wants me, wants me to participate in his plans, his purposes on earth and transforming it, redeeming it so that it reflects heaven. Amen. There is a larger uh, picture. There's a larger battle at stake. Uh, don't, don't, don't fall for the, 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 the trick of the enemy. The second point is this, you know, or maybe let's look at uh, G- Genesis chapter 3 verse 4. The second thing uh, that the devil attacks us and tempts us, you know, he tempts us with this, you know, he, he causes us to doubt. And specifically, doubt God. In verse 4 of Genesis 3, Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Everybody say, for God knows. You know, the devil here, you know, for God knows is, is, a, is a powerful declaration. Only God knows who trust in him. Uh, but the devil here wants to twist that. Every time the devil tries to twist God's word. And for God knows here is an implication. It is, it is you know, sowing a, a, a doubt into Eve's heart that God is holding something back. For God knows that one day you will surpass him. For God knows that you might not need him. And so he's holding this thing back. He has a secret agenda. No, 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 that's not the case. In fact, the Lord's Prayer connects us to God's agenda. But yet, it doesn't change the fact that, that the devil tries to make us think, make us doubt the character of God, and, and makes us suspicious of Him. You know, we go through this all the time. You know, whether it's because of how our earthly fathers have disappointed us, we cause that to corrupt and color our view of our Father in heaven. Uh, or it could be because of uh, unanswered prayers. You know, for example, you know, you're, you're, you're praying for a certain breakthrough, a breakthrough in your work, a breakthrough in the area of your health, uh, and, and nothing happens. In fact, the situation becomes worse. You know, you're praying uh, for a breakthrough in your job, you lose your job. You're praying for a breakthrough in your health, in the health of your loved ones, and in, in worse, not only do their conditions deteriorate, you lose them to death all together. But then somebody else, you know, comes in and they pray for healing and they get it. They pray for a breakthrough in their work and they get promoted. And, and sometimes what's, what's worse, and I use it loosely worse, is that maybe you feel like, you know, how come I fast and pray and you pray for a minute? You, you, and, and no, I, I've been a Christian for 10 years and you've been a Christian for 10 minutes. You know, how come God is kinder to you than me? And, and what happens is that the devil comes in. He whispers, you know, you know, he doesn't always comes up to you and say, oh, for God knows. No, but we have a lot of for God knows uh, 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 moments in our life when we're faced with that disappointment and then we go like, you know, I, God, are you holding back? God, how come? How come? And I want you to know this happens to all of us. You know, as a pastor, you know, there are moments where I go, like, God, how come? How come I'm, 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 I'm preaching the gospel and, and, and nobody's getting saved? And, and how come another person is having a more successful ministry than me? You know, how come that person's getting ahead uh, and I'm being stuck 
behind. And, and the longer we, we, we begin to buy into the lie of the enemy to say it, not causing us to go like you see, God knows, God knows that, that, that you know, wh whatever it is, God knows that you've been naughty, God knows that, you know, you're not as holy, and God knows that's why he's punishing you, that's why he's causing your prayers not to be answered, you know, that God's, God's, God's making your life miserable, you know, God knows that you like that person and he wants to take it away because he is, he is he's whatever, you know, he's evil, and, and but I want you to know that is not true. Doesn't change the fact if we're really honest, all of us go through that from time to time. When we're down in our dumps, when we feel alone, when we feel defeated, when we experience defeat, when we go through the valley, you know, it, very often we will wonder, God, are you really there? We've all had that, but how does Jesus, you know, come back on this? How does Jesus? you know, retort to this. Jesus reminds us, I wrote here, the devil wants you to think that God is holding back. But Jesus wants you to remember you have a father in heaven who gives daily. You see, the devil wants you to think that our God's holding back. If God's holding back knowledge, if God's holding back a better life for you, you know, wh whatever you are, whatever you do, you might feel like, you know, God's holding back. You know, God's holding back on the fun. You know, oh, no, God, your ways are so boring. You know, I, I just want to party. How come I can't just party like, like my friends? How can I just party like the world parties? And God, you're holding me back. No, God's not holding you back. In fact, God loves you. He is a father in heaven. And not just that, he gives, gives, gives. What we learned last week, our daily bread, giving daily. And so this is what we need to do. Point number two, we need to remember God's character. When we pray the Lord's prayer, Jesus knows that the enemy will attack God's character. So we need to remind ourselves First of all, reminder number one, how does the prayer start? Our Father, not our taskmaster, not our bully in heaven, but our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, every day, a daily allowance, like a good father he gives us money every day, he gives us a material blessing every day. But we also learn that it's so much more than material blessing. You know, what's the most precious thing that God gave to you? God gave to you forgiveness, forgiveness of our debts. But how did that forgiveness come? Through his son, Jesus. Jesus died for you. How can God withhold back when he gave Jesus? How can God have an a, a ulterior motive when he gave Jesus? How can God be secretly planned to hurt you when Jesus was the one who got hurt? Jesus was the one who died. Jesus was the one who went to the cross. Jesus was the one who got whipped. Jesus was the one, the one that got slapped. Jesus was the one that got pierced. Jesus, if God loved you so much that he gave his own son as ransom for you, how can he not love you? Or worse, how can we believe that he doesn't love us? So we got to remember, we got to remind ourselves of God's perfect character. Not only is he God with a heavenly kingdom, with a heavenly worldview, and, and, and plan for to, to, to redeem this world. He is a father, a father who loves you so much that he sent Jesus. You know, who would want orphans like us? God. God looked at the orphan of humanity. Look at how broken we are. Look at how purposeless we are. He says, I want to redeem all of humanity. I want to redeem all these languages. I want to redeem all these races. I want to show them that there is a higher way of living. I want to show them that they are loved from above. And so I gave my son, Jesus. Before all of us were born, Jesus came and took away all of our sin. So friends, Jesus wasn't joking when he says, our father. And he taught us to pray. And when we pray that, we remember again, not only do we have a father, but we have a friend in Jesus. How do we armor up against the attack of the enemy when we remember God's 
character. And point number three is this, as I bring this to a close. Let's read uh, Genesis chapter three, verse six, right? Genesis chapter three, verse six. The third attack is this, right? Uh, so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took off its fruit and ate. And she also gave her husband who was with her and he ate. How does the devil want to trip us up? First of all, he tries to get us to focus on not just the one thing, but the wrong thing. And then he gets us to be suspicious of God's character. And lastly, the devil wants us to be in control. Wait a second. Isn't being in control a good thing? Well, not all the time. Not all the time. Because like I said, you know, uh, context is key. That's why we need to reframe our context. And, and what is good, you know, is subjective. Like I said, the baby and the candy, you know, context, everything in its proper context. The problem is this, that many times when we are in control or we try to be in control, we don't have the right context. We don't have the right motivation. We don't have the right picture. Uh, we don't have all the information. You know, if, if, if you were to do something important, uh, like buy a house or take up a loan, uh, you would hire someone like Pastor Cat, a lawyer who will go through line by line, all the details, all the small fine print so that you can have all the information, you can make the most informed decision so that you will know whether this is a, a, the risk that you want to take or risk that you don't want to touch. And so what the devil wants is knowing that we don't have all the information, pushes us, pumps us up, hypes us up, makes us think that we have it all, that we know it all, and therefore we can do it all, but it's wrong, wrong, wrong. And, and, and this is the one that I feel applies to us the most today. Because the truth is this, you know, we live, a lot of people say this, we live in a very gray world. It's not just black and white. And, and, and when you think about it, so did Eve. Well, not gray, but think about it for a moment. He, she was tempted, but it wasn't the evil. It wasn't the evil of the fruit that attracted her. It was the good. You know, it's, it's written here in verse 6, when she saw that it was good for food. You know, it was a goodness. And so, if we don't have God's context, if we, our lives are not submitted, if we're not trusting in God's character and His nature, then with our, even with our own eyes, even with 2020 vision, and, and, and Eve definitely had 2020 vision. It didn't say she had glasses then. And she could still make the wrong decision because good is not good enough when compared to God. And that's how the devil gets to us. He doesn't tempt us with evil. Most of us are not tempted to kill. Most of us are not tempted uh, to steal. Most of us. Uh, but we are usually tempted by the good. Oh, you know, isn't it good? And, 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 and the way I break it down is this, right? It says here that the woman saw that the tree was good for food. For Good for food, you know, means it's consumable. Consumable means it's pleasurable. And many times we make decisions, oh, is that pleasurable? Oh, you know, we love things that are pleasurable. And we are most tempted by things that are pleasurable. And so the first thing, good for food, good for consumption. Consumption makes me happy, pleasure. Then it was pleasant to the eyes, attractive. Oh, beautiful. We are, we are you know, our eyes gravitate towards beautiful things, attractive things. And we are always tempted by beautiful things, attractive things, right? And, and, and the, a tree desirable to make one wise. Oh, wow. So not only is it pleasurable, not only is it beautiful, but it, is, it, it feels so intellectual. It feels so logical. You know, it, 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 it's so wise. To have that, what, you know, what makes all the sense? Why? It makes sense to have that. And, and that's where the devil traps us. He coats it. It's sin. It's destruction. But he sugarcoats it with pleasure. Pornography. It's sin. Someone's being exploited. But 
the devil sugarcoats it, pleasure. Sugarcoats it, beautiful. Look at all the beautiful, gorgeous, naked men and women. Ooh. But the word of God says, no, don't. You know, that's, you know, lust is adultery. You know, be pure. You know, the Bible says, do not, do not give in to sin. And, 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 and or, or worse, you know, logic knowledge you know oh you know isn't it logical to do that it doesn't it make sense you know it doesn't make sense to tithe doesn't it make more sense to save money you know and then we go like oh yeah 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 it makes more sense to save money you know god wants me to have a house maybe you know if i don't tithe i can repay this mortgage and then you know then i can be a blessing next time you know or maybe i don't need to go to church right now it is more important to sit for the exam so that when i graduate and then when i become successful and then when i become rich then i will praise the lord then i will tell people how good god is friends then you won't be a christian because the thing is this, when we are tempted, you know, we fall. When we fall, we lose our intimacy. When we lose our intimacy, we drift away. When we eventually drift away long enough, we, we no longer, you know, look like Christ. We no longer, you know, or worse, we, we become Christians that are Christians in name only, but no fruit, no fruit. We only have emotional repentance. God, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. But in our lives, we're still addicted we're still in bondage to to uh, you know to all sorts of things. We're still stuck. We're still a slave to sin. God wants us to be set free. You know, I'm just being real because this this is something that that, that hits us, isn't it? You know, the world will, will judge Christianity and say that you know why. For example, like I said, you know, uh, why do you have all this? Rules about purity, no sexual purity, against sexual immorality. You know, people attack us. What century are you living in? You know, look at that. Isn't it beautiful? You know, when people can just love whoever they want. You know, uh, it, it, what, what's wrong? You know, you know, just let them do what they want. You know, uh, uh, you know, don't shame them. You know, just as people, they are, they are, they are, they are, as long as it's not hurting you, why? Pleasure, pleasure. As long as they're not, not hurting you, as long as they're not no, disrupting your pleasure, let them do what they want. You know, in, in church so many times, you know, people, you know, even in this pandemic, I know Christians, and we, we, we get tempted, don't we? You know, you know, uh, 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 a guy and girl who are dating in church, oh, pandemic's coming. Hey, you know, uh, there's a lockdown. Uh, we, we can't see each other. You know, because the rules said so, except when we have meet outside with social distancing, you know, and, and it's going to be such, so, so tough on our uh, mental and emotional health, you know. So, so don't you think it is, it is more logical, the devil tempts, don't you think it is, it makes more sense for us just to move in together? Not just for the pandemic, just for the pandemic, you know. Pastor, you don't understand. You know, this is just for the pandemic. We're supporting each other just for the pandemic. Can't you see, Pastor, this is good? Can't you see, Pastor, this is good for mental health? You no, know, we're moving it. And can't you see, Pastor, we're saving money? You know, you no, know, I pay rent, my girlfriend pays rent. Now we, we, you know, we can save on one rent. That rent can go towards missions, you claim. You know, we can help support each other. We can even tune into church together. That's wrong. It's a slippery slope. You know, we think to ourselves, you know, wow, you know, isn't it beautiful? Isn't it beautiful? You know, we get to experience uh, what, you know, what it feels like to be, you know, married, you know, but, but pastor, don't worry. We will not cross the line. We will not cross the line. And, and, and we, we, we make our own rules. We think we're in control. We think we know it all. We think that we are strong enough. But the devil knows that we are weak. The devil wants us in control because he knows that he can overpower us. But what does Jesus want? What does Jesus want? Jesus wants us to give our control to God. And so point number three, uh, this, this, this is what happens when we pray the Lord's Prayer. It's also relinquishing our control. Point number three, relinquish your control. This is the armor of God. 
The devil wants you to be in control so that he can overpower you. But Jesus teaches us to pray that God, that you be in control. Amen. You know, what does it say? It says here, and this is where I want us to focus on, on Matthew 6, verse 13, right? It says, you know, do not lead us into temptation. And one is no, God, God doesn't tempt us. So when, when Jesus is teaching us to pray, pray to God not to lead you into temptation and to deliver you from the evil one. You know, it, 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 you know sometimes you read this and we go like, wait, uh, Jesus, you know, does God forget? You know, does he unknowingly lead us into temptation? So we're going to tell him, don't, don't God, don't remember? No left turn, no left turn, left turn bad, don't turn, don't turn. No, God doesn't need a reminder, but, but you know, God has given us a free will. You know, God can't force us. God can't zap us and, and make us obey. We can't. You know, we're not robots. But what Jesus is saying is this. Hey, would you trust God so much that you give him the control of your life? That he, that you trust him so much that, that you will only go where he leads you. And, and, and in other words, wherever he leads you, you will rest in that knowing that this is a path that doesn't lead to temptation and this is a path that delivers us from the evil one. You know, for example, right? Uh, let's say you have a sweet tooth and, and, and I'm just using a more harmless temptation because we've been talking about some heavy stuff. So some harmless temptation can be, can be, you know, so you have a sweet tooth and if you eat well, any more sweet tooth, you will lose all your teeth. You, you can't, you can't, okay? But guess what? You have to go shopping. Right? You have to go shopping. So so what do you do? And you, you know, God, I'm so weak. If if I see and, and the shop, no, a uh, uh, Tesco, Sainsbury, whatever it is, you know, Wayne Rose, they know how to position, they know know at the checkout to make sure to put some sweets there, to put some soft drinks there. Even when you're shopping for chicken, there's some sweets there hanging around there. Even when you're buying toilet paper, there's some sweets there. Oh, they know how to get you. So God, I cannot trust myself. I am too weak. My eyes are too weak. If I see sugar, I will crave it. So God, lead me. I gladly, I, I, I'm saying, Lord, I don't want to walk into the Sainsbury of life and walk as I please. As I walk into it, lead me. Because you know which owl doesn't have sweet stuff. You know when to turn left and when to turn right so that I do not hit a temptation that I cannot handle. You know where the evil one is prowling. So God, I give up my control. I give up my right to dictate my own future, my own way of living. And I say, God, I surrender it all to you. Have your way. Lead me, Lord. Lead me. Many times we go, lead me not in the but the key word here is lead me. Would you give God leadership over your life? Lead me not into temptation and deliver me from evil. Amen. That is called giving God control. You know, once I heard this testimony, uh, there was an a, a, a expat, an old gentleman in our church in Malaysia, and a real man of God. And he was saying that, you know, because of his work, he had to uh, travel and work abroad. And there was one time his work assignment, you know, he, he's a European gentleman. So uh, for a season, he had to uh, be based in Thailand, in, in, in Bangkok to work. Uh, him alone, his, his wife also was working and was not able to be with him. So for a season, they had to be apart. Uh, and he was sharing and just being honest to say that, you know, uh, 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 I, I'm an average looking person, or at least I think I am. Uh, but when you are a white man in Bangkok, you know, a, 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 a lot of people uh, uh, find you attractive. They find you exotic. And and every day I will walk to work and, and the fastest route to work is sometimes that I've got to take a shortcut through this little market, but this market is also notorious at night, you know, as, as a, 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 a pub, bar, red light district kind of place. And, and, and But it's like the fastest way, you know, and when you're walking and living in Southeast Asia, you know, it rains. It's not like in the UK, you know, when it rains, you'd be like, yeah, sounds about right. Life goes on, you know, but you know, in, in Asia, when it rains, it pours, lightning, thunderstorm, floods. And so you're heavily inconvenienced 
when the, the environment is not too, you know, against you. And so sometimes the easiest way, the easiest way is, you know, the, the most sheltered area uh, is that dodgy part of town. And, and, and yet living alone, he said, God, lead me not into temptation. Deliver me from the evil one. God, I know my weaknesses. I, and, and even if I'm not weak, sometimes, you know, the temptation can be too strong. So God, you know, lead me, you know, teach me. to. I'm, I'm a foreign person in a foreign land. I don't know how to navigate this city. But Lord, help me to avoid the dodgy lanes. Help me to avoid the temptation. If I have to, you know, walk further, if I have to get drenched more, I will get drenched as long as I can be, you know, uh, still holy uh, before your presence. You know, if I have to sweat more and when you walk in Asia, you sweat. It's hot. You know, that's why hardly anyone walks in Asia. But, you know, he had to. And, and, and I would sweat more for you. You know, whatever it is, I will sweat more. I will get drenched more. You know, I, 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 will, I will walk longer as long as you lead me on the path of righteousness. How many of us would say that, God, you know, I know I'm weak and the internet is this super highway into everywhere and God, help me, Lord. That, that Lord, if I'm, if I'm too weak, then lead me. Lord, lead me. I don't want to be scrolling the wrong down the wrong rabbit hole. I don't want to just be, you know, watching stuff I'm not supposed to watch. So God, lead me, lead me. You know, God have control over my internet habits, have control over uh, uh, my browsing behavior. God have control, have control. God, I, you know, it's the pandemic. Oh, I miss my boyfriend. I miss my girlfriend. The whole world says live together. The whole world says just move in. The whole world says it's better. It's more logical. But God, not my way, but your way. Lord, lead me, lead me. Not my own leadership, but your leadership over my life. The world says, you know, marriage is whatever you make of it. Whoever can marry, even if you don't want to marry, you can shack in together, have kids, do whatever you want, as long as you're not hurting anyone. But God says, no, no, pursue me, pursue holiness. Would you say, God, lead me? Not as the world says, not when it's just, even if it's logical to me, God, I do not submit to my own logic. Even if it's pleasurable, God, I do not want to submit to my own pleasure. Even if it's pleasing to my eyes, God, I submit to your leadership because my eyes and my vision is limited, but your vision is eternal. Amen. You know, we need to do this. And Jesus was teaching us this when you pray. You know, one thing Jesus did a lot, he prayed. He prayed a lot. And guess what? You know, Jesus wasn't just, you know, do as I say, not as I do. I believe that when Jesus, as he taught them how to pray, I believe that every time he went away to pray, he prayed the same prayer. In fact, at the Garden of Gethsemane, before he Face the, the, the biggest obstacle called the cross. When he was tempted, you know what he says, Father, let this cup depart from me, but not my will. Does it sound familiar? Not my will, but yours be done. And he was giving leadership of his life to God. And God says, I want you to go to the cross. And Jesus surrendered. Jesus role model out submission to God. Not just submission to God but the armor of God. Because when you live a prayerful life, when you pray, when you declare the Lord's prayer over your life daily, oh, it forms a shield, it forms an armor around your life so that you can pursue holiness with God and you grow in your intimacy with Him. Amen. You know, can I share one scripture? In Romans chapter 13, verse 14, it says, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. You know, it, it, sometimes we, we don't just have the enemy, the devil, to contend with, with our flesh. We are broken, right? We are, our sin, the sin of mankind has corrupted the world. So our environment is messed up. We are messed up on the inside and the enemy is messed up and dragging us down. But what does the Bible says? It says, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. That means be more like Christ. Pray like Christ. Live like Christ. Love like Christ. Think like Christ. Christ and give no provision, leave no space, give no, you know, no space for your flesh 
to fulfill its lust. Many times we think that, oh, it's logical, oh, I'm in control. You're just giving your flesh more room for it to fulfill its lust. Oh, it's pleasurable. So, you know, you're giving your flesh more space. Oh, it's logical, more space. Oh, you know, it's, it, it, it's, it's pleasing. It makes sense to me. You know, it saves money, more space. And then little by little, we lose everything. We lose the, the, the salvation that God purchased for us. Don't do that, friends. Don't do that. Amen. You know, I, I, I preach way too much and I just want to bring things to a close. And I pray that this message has helped you. I pray that this has blessed you. You know, doesn't mean that, therefore, when we pray this and, and, and we will never face temptation. No, no, we will be tempted. You know, we, we will be tempted. Uh, but when we pray this, we are, we are reminding ourselves that even as I'm going through this temptation, you know, I trust that, that, you know, not to give in because there is a larger context. Reframe your context. You know, I know that God's allowed me to go through this valley, go through this offense. You know, sometimes we are tempted when other people hurt us and we are tempted to hate them back. You know, do offenses come? Yeah, they come. Uh, but we need to trust in God's nature that, that no, that, that God has a plan. You know, even when you pray, God, I give you leadership. I relinquish control. You know, it doesn't mean that God will not bring us through some uncomfortable passages. Jesus relinquished control and God brought him to the cross. What does this mean? For us in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, sorry, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 says this, No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Remember the character of the Father. God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. He knows the context. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. God will still bring us to temptation, but he will also give us a way out. That is the context. You can be in a temptation. You can be tempted, but there is a way out. That is the context. He is a father who will not tempt you more than you can bear. He, that's the good character of God. And the thing is this, when you relinquish your control, God's grace takes over. You see, the grace of God is not permission to sin. The grace of God is not to cover up your sin. You know, that's the wrong thinking. That's why a lot of us, we go like, oh, by the grace of God, we're just saying that, oh, God will cover up my sin. The grace of God is the ability, the, the, the undeserved merit, the undeserved gift from God that comes over us, the strength that comes over us, uh, the, the anointing that comes over us that helps us to say no to the things we need to say no to and yes to the things we need to say yes to. When we relinquish control to God, we're asking for the grace of God to enter our lives. Would you say yes to God today? Let's pray. God, we thank you for your word. Lord, we ask that you help us not just to be hearers of the word today, but help us to live it out. Help us, Lord, to glorify you in all that we do. God, we know that temptation is real. In the world that we're living in, Lord, we are constantly being tested. We're constantly being tempted. But Lord, help us, Lord, to remember that we are not just citizens of earth. We are citizens of heaven on earth. And Lord, there is a bigger picture. There is a bigger plan. There is a bigger vision. You have a bigger plan and purposes for us than what we face. So Lord, help us to pass every test so that we do not miss out on your great plan for us. And God, we know that you are a good father that does not lead us to a place where we cannot handle it. For every temptation, there will be a way out. That way out produces a testimony and that testimony can set other people free. So God, we give you control. We give up our control over what we think is wise in our eyes. Lord, if there's anything in our lives right now that we are doing, that we are self-justifying by saying that, nah, I, I, I can handle this. I'm not addicted. No, this is not a problem. Lord, forgive us and cause us to repent. God, help us, Lord, to admit it is a problem. We are not in control. This is not right before you, even if it's right before my friends. And Lord, we come back to that place. We repent. We for ask for your forgiveness. And Lord, we ask that you help us to armor up, help us to put on the Lord Jesus Christ so that we can withstand and so that we can overcome our flesh. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Friends, before I close today's meeting, I just want to give you an opportunity. Friends, God loves you. I said it again and again. We have a Father who loves us, 
who knows what we're going through. And friends, I want you to know, yeah, you know, we live in a broken, messed up world. All of us, we've, we've, we've got brokenness within us. We're not here to judge. But I also know this. God loves you too much to see you stay broken, to see you stay addicted, to see you uh, uh, be, you know, feeding yourself lies uh, 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 about yourself, about your self-worth, about your own future. They are not from him. They are from the devil. They are from hell itself. And God wants to set you free. Would you invite Jesus into your heart. Like I said, God has given us the beautiful gift of choice. Would you choose Christ? Would you open up your heart to him? Would you allow him to change your status from lost to save, from sinner to saint by his grace? And would you allow him to heal you? Would you allow him to deliver you? Would you allow him to set you free from that which the world cannot set you free from? Would you, would you, would you say yes to that? Would you say yes to freedom? Would you say yes to the Lordship of Jesus Christ? If that's you, after this, we're going to say a prayer. I want you to echo it with your heart, with all sincerity. And I believe that when you do that, the Bible says something supernatural happens. You are born again. Uh, the old will die off. The, the old self will dissipate. And the new you will be birthed. There will be new confidence, new hope, new future, a new you, a new life. In Christ Jesus, would you give your life to him today? I pray that you do. God bless. If you've been touched by today's message and would like to invite Jesus into your life, why don't you join me in saying this prayer? Lord Jesus, thank you for paying the ultimate price for my sins by dying on the cross for me. I receive your love and forgiveness and eternal life by faith. Come into my heart and life and be my Lord and my Savior. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.
you, Pastor Day, for that word. I pray that all of us have been blessed by this series on the Lord's Prayer. And I pray that it's just not there for knowledge sake, but I pray that we will continue to use this as a model prayer for our lives and how we should live our lives as well. Amen. Now we come to the end of our service, so you, will you just allow me to close us in prayer? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Father, we pray for your, our entire church family. We pray for Pastor Kenneth and Pastor Sandra, our elders, pastors, leaders, church plan coordinators, both here and abroad. Give us your daily peace and protection and provide us all our needs according to your riches and glory, especially the wisdom to continue to be a church that's in line with your perfect will. Let your joy always be our strength and may our lives always bring you glory. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, will you just stand and allow me to declare the benediction over you today? Reading from number 6, 24. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. No church, we come to the end of our service, so do stick around. There'll be some hangouts later, um, hangouts with your different homes, so do join them. And if you're new again, say hey, hi, the link will be dropped again on the, on the chat. So do pop in and say hello to us. Other than that, have a great week ahead and I pray that all of us will continue to be blessed. Amen. <laughs>